Welcome to we're going to go over how to set up a full stack development environment on your local machine, including a UI which is run on an Nginx server and accessible at localhost. We're going to have an API available through Postgres, accessible at localhost 3000. And we're going to have a Swagger UI available that hits the API. And then the last piece, we'll have a database set up using PostgreSQL. As you can see, there's nothing set up currently. We don't have any containers available. Just run Docker Compose. Oh. Okay, and as you can see, we now have these four containers running. One for the database, one for the API, one for the Swagger, and one for the UI. We have a volume here, which holds the data for the database. Now let's just take a look. So if we go to the Swagger UI here, you'll see that that is now available. And it's authenticated through a JWT token via the API and localhost 30. So this localhost 3000 holds the Swagger definition. And then with Postgres, you can make the call directly in the URL. So here we're looking at the rec recipes table. We have the UI here. So if we just refresh the page and say we log in with our user, you'll see that we have the recipes and the users tables here visible. But as you can see on the left side, we're hitting specific localhost 3000. So we're hitting that API here within the UI. The last piece is at the database. So we're connecting through PG admin and 127001 with the Postgres uh, basic username password information. If we open up the schemas and we go to the recipe schema, go to the table, we'll see that these tables exist here. And if we come back to the swagger definition, you'll see that those rec tables are available through the Swagger. I think this is a good way just to get your project started where you can mess with the database API and UI. And uh, we'll go through the steps. Uh, there'll be chapters in the description. We'll touch on each of these different pieces, but not go into too much detail. We have a different video available about how to set up authentication within Postgres API and setting up the database there. There should be a link that pops up above for that. First, we're going to set up our direct, put a link in the chat, but this GitHub here is a great way to get, get started with the Docker uh, setup here. As you can see with the diagram they have set up, basically what we're doing is having a Docker Compose. For us, we're going to be throwing the Swagger UI into this uh, Docker Compose one, but it would be better practice if you're planning on deploying this to production and you don't want that Swagger UI available there. With this diagram, you'll have the web browser here that talks to the Swagger UI, the Postgres, and then the Nginx server with the UI. The two additional folders we're going to have in our directory here is the slash html which holds your uh, ui the init db folder is going to be to run like any initial sql setup to start we just set up a basic structure where we have a docker file which is going to be used for our database image a docker compose yaml file a dot env file a ui folder and an initial init db folder first let's set the environment file. So we're just using the basic Postgres for that. The next piece in this file is for the Postgres API, which includes the DB anon role and the DB schemas. Uh, if you want more information on this, we have a few other videos that kind of go in more detail about that setup there. Next, let's set up, set up the Docker Compose, which is going to be consisting of four different pieces. So for the database, what we're doing is building our own Docker image. So we'll have a build, which includes the context, which is the current directory we're in, and then the Docker file, which is called Docker file, file that it's using. For the volumes, we set up the PG data, which is going to be for the, the Postgres database data. The next is the initDB folder, which stores our uh, database scripts for startup. So if this PG data volume is empty, these scripts will run. Uh, for the ports, we're doing 45432. And then for networks, we're doing backend just to mark it as a backend. We'll hit on the Docker file and then the different scripts we have in the initDB folder here. For the Docker file, we're just using the latest Postgres database image. We're copying over some files from the PG JWT extension, which allows us to authenticate with the JWT token. This folder here is just a copy from the GitHub repository for the PG JWT. 0 0.2.0 is the current version. The last piece for the database is this initDB folder. So what we have in place here is a list of scripts to run. Uh, based upon the name, so we have it ordered from 0 to 6. We can just touch on these real quick. For 0, we're just setting up our configuration and environment variables. For 1, we're setting up any database roles. 2, we're creating our extensions for JWT authentication. And then we're also setting up our basic users table and any uh, 
any login functions for that. For three, we're just setting up a basic audit table just so we can keep track of the users and what we'll change with them. Four is just loading in dummy data to that users table so we can log in within our UI. Five is setting up a new schema for our recipes data. And then number six is setting up uh, some dummy data again so we can just have a way to test that easily uh, just off the bat. Okay, so with that, we have our database service set up here. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our API which is we're just going to be using a, uh, the latest Postgres image here. Give it a name for the environment variables. There's a video about this in our Postgres APIs playlist. This is for connecting to the database. Uh, this lists out the database schemas. This is for the non-authenticated user role on where that should hit. This is for the JWT authentication, the secret that's used. This one here is for the API URL, so we're on localhost 3000. This next one is for the Swagger URL, which is on localhost 8080. And we, we allow cores to be true there. This next one is for the security side. So when we were in the Swagger earlier and we saw a little lock symbol, it was because of this variable. And then we just want to enable aggregates. So like you can do a sum or anything when you're calling the API. And for the next one, it's dependent upon the database above. The port is 3000. And then we're just grouping it in the same network as the database, which is the backend. Next piece is the Swagger UI here. We have the image, we're getting the latest Swagger UI, give it a name. And then the environment URL is localhost 3000, which is dependent upon this Postgres one here. Postgres above, as we just mentioned. And then the ports are 8080, so it's available at localhost 8080 once it's up and running. And then for networks, we stuck this in the, let's go front end. The last piece we're gonna do is the UI. For the UI, we're using the Nginx latest image, giving it a name. For the volumes, we're copying our .ui folder, which is just your static built website to the user share nginx HTML folder. So the contents inside of this HTML folder is what's going to be shown on localhost 80. So for ports, we're on 80. And then for networks, just front end. And then the last piece of this Docker Compose is just to provide a reference to the networks and volumes in case you want to do anything with them later on. Uh, so for us, we're just leaving it empty for now where we have the back end, front end, and the PG data. Okay, so with that, we have our Docker Compose set up for the database, the Postgres API, Swagger, and the UI. Okay, so with all that set up, let's just go back to the command line and let's run Docker Compose up and see if everything is running properly. Okay, so as you can see, we're now running 4.4 got the database, API, Swagger, and UI all running. See with the UI, we're properly fetching the data and it's all coming back to us. The API is available and the Swagger is available. Thanks for watching. If you have any ways to improve the process or any questions, just leave a comment.